Types and Modes of Conventional Ventilation, prepared by Margarita Vasquez, the Associate Professor of Pediatrics and an attending neonatologist at the University of Texas Health in San Antonio, Texas. Audio by Megan Gray, Assistant Professor of Pediatrics and attending neonatologist at Seattle Children's Hospital and the University of Washington in Seattle. In this module, we will discuss the various variables that can be adjusted when using mechanical ventilation. Your learning objectives for this module are to be able to define the ventilator variables and describe how adjustments of these variables may impact the patient's condition. It is important to note that there are a variety of ventilators in use across the United States by many different manufacturers. Most modern ventilators incorporate real-time pulmonary graphics and breath-to-breath -breath data displays, which can help clinicians in choosing and adjusting ventilator settings. Understanding how to adjust the ventilator requires a thorough understanding of the variables and how adjustment may impact the patient. No matter who manufactured the ventilators in use in your NICU, the variables are generally the same. The fraction of inspired oxygen is the percentage of oxygen in the gas delivered to the patient. This language is universal whether the patient is receiving invasive or non-invasive respiratory support. The fraction of delivered oxygen can range from 21% in room air up to 100% oxygen. Inspired gas is first warmed and humidified using an external device before the gas is delivered to the patient. Humidity added to the inspired gas is important for several reasons. Maintaining optimal humidity and air temperature helps with mucociliary clearance that's traditionally compromised by the endotracheal tube. It helps prevent airway drying and aids in thermal regulation, especially for smaller infants. The amount of water vapor that gas can hold increases with the temperature of the gas. The higher the temperature of the inspired gas, the more likely there is to be condensation of water in the ventilator circuit or endotracheal tube. This condensation can cause a patient to gag and lead to autocycling, a situation discussed in more detail later in the program. Thus, the temperature of the inspired gas and the amount of humidity need to be carefully regulated. Pressure by the conventional ventilator is delivered in several ways. First, the peak inspiratory pressure, or PIP, is the highest pressure delivered by the ventilator during an inspiration. PIP can be controlled both indirectly and directly. During pressure-targeted ventilation, the PIP is chosen directly by the clinician and remains static. During volume-targeted ventilation, the PIP is indirectly chosen and is variable depending on lung compliance. An elevated PIP may increase the risk of barotrauma, volutrauma, and BPD. Positive end expiratory pressure, or PEEP, is the baseline pressure of the ventilator and is directly set by the clinician. This baseline pressure is the lowest pressure reached during expiration. The use of adequate PEEP recruits and maintains functional residual capacity. PEEP helps to maintain lung volume during expiration, improves VQ matching, and prevents alveolar collapse, though an elevated PEEP decreases the pressure gradient between PIP and PEEP, which can lead to smaller tidal volumes and hypercarbia if not chosen carefully. The mean airway pressure is the average amount of airway pressure delivered to the patient during a respiratory cycle. Mean airway pressure is indirectly controlled in conventional mechanical ventilation as compared to the high-frequency ventilation. During conventional ventilation, mean airway pressure can be changed by making adjustments in the PIP, PEEP, and inspiration and expiratory times, as well as the respiratory rate. A volume of gas is delivered to the patient with each inspiration, no matter whether the inspiration was generated by the machine or the patient. During volume-targeted ventilation, the volume delivered to the patient is static, no matter what the patient's lung compliance is. With pressure-targeted ventilation strategies, the volume delivered with each patient is variable, depending on the patient's lung compliance. With the use of flow sensors, both the inhaled and exhaled tidal volume can be measured by most modern ventilators. The difference between the inhaled and exhaled volumes is used to calculate the percent of endotracheal tube leak. Minute ventilation can also be calculated by multiplying the respiratory rate by the average tidal volume. The flow sensor is usually located between the endotracheal tube and the ventilator tubing on neonatal ventilators. Flow refers to the amount of gas circulating through the ventilator during a given amount of time. In other words, flow is the rate of gas delivered in the ventilator circuit. Flow rates are set by the clinician, and usually 6 to 10 liters per minute of gas is sufficient. This parameter is generally not adjusted during ventilation. Peak flow rate is the maximum flow rate delivered by the ventilator during an inspiration. Flow rate is used to deliver set pressure or volume. If the flow rate is set too low, the ventilator may not reach the set targeted pressure or volume, which can cause air hunger and increased work of breathing for the patient. Too high of a flow rate can lead to more rapid filling of the lungs, and the set volume or pressure are achieved faster. 
However, it should be noted that excessive flow can lead to turbulence, which increases airway resistance and an inadvertent peep. The rate setting simply refers to the number of breaths a ventilator delivers per minute. In this figure, the rate is set to a minimum of 25. Depending on the mode selected, the ventilator can provide all of the patient's ventilation, or the patient may be able to breathe spontaneously between the ventilator breaths for a higher rate. In the red box, the black curves represent ventilator-driven breaths and the gray curves represent spontaneous breaths. How much additional support the infant receives on spontaneous breaths is dependent on the ventilator mode. Of note, spontaneous breathing rates are inversely related to the gestational age and time constant of the patient. Smaller infants with less compliant lungs usually breathe faster than larger infants with normally compliant lungs. Inhalation occurs faster than exhalation, so ensuring adequate time for both inhalation and exhalation is important when considering the set rate on the ventilator. Inspiratory time and expiratory time are influenced by their time constants. Time constants measure how quickly the lung can inflate and deflate. Time constants are directly related to both compliance and resistance and are expressed in seconds. We know that one time constant empties 63% of the patient's tidal volume. So we can use this information to ensure adequate time for expiration when using mechanical ventilation. Three to five time constants are required to ensure complete emptying of the lung. Providing adequate expiratory time when on a ventilator can prevent breath stacking, air trapping, and over distension. An inspiratory time of three to five time constants will allow for complete inspiration. For infants with normal lung compliance, a time constant of 0.09 seconds is average and an inspiratory time of 0.2 to 0.5 seconds is usually adequate for full lung filling. Making the inspiratory time too long can lead to significant ventilator patient asynchrony. Making the inspiratory time too short can decrease the tidal volume, leading to hypercarbia and poor ventilation. Infants whose disease process is associated with longer time constants, such as severe BPD, meaning it takes longer time to fill and empty the lungs, may benefit from longer inspiratory times up to 0.6 to 0.8 seconds. Exhalation generally takes about twice as long as inhalation. Therefore, you need an expiratory time that is 1.5 to 2 times longer than the inspiratory time to allow for complete exhalation and avoid air trapping. An I to E ratio is normally 1 to 2. The change from inspiration to expiration in the mechanically ventilated breath is termed cycling. It's important for patient cycling to coincide with the termination of the patient's spontaneous inspiration in order to avoid asynchrony between the ventilator and patient. There are four variables used to determine when the ventilator will cycle from inhalation to exhalation. They are pressure, time, volume, and flow. Pressure cycling occurs when a threshold pressure is reached and inspiration is stopped by the ventilator. This more commonly occurs if a patient coughs and sets off a pressure alarm. The ventilator will stop the inspiration and start exhalation to avoid sustained elevated pressure being delivered to the lung. Time cycling occurs when the ventilator cycles to expiration after a set time is reached. The time cycle can be adjusted by setting the rate, inspiratory time, or inspiratory to expiratory ratio. Volume cycling inspiration ends once the set target volume is delivered. Flow cycling occurs when the ventilator cycles to exhalation when a patient's inspiratory flow decreases to a predetermined level. There are a variety of modes of ventilation that can be used in the intensive care unit. These modes include IMV, SIMV, AC, PSV, and SIMV PSV. We will further describe these modes in the coming slides. To allow for spontaneous breathing while intubated, the ventilator must be able to sense the patient's respiratory effort. The assist sensitivity determines how easy it is for the patient to trigger the ventilator to deliver a breath. The sensitivity setting of the ventilator is the threshold value for the trigger variable, which when met starts inspiration. In general, increased sensitivity improves patient ventilator synchrony, but excessively high sensitivity can result in false or auto-triggering by the ventilator. This can be caused by patient movement or condensation of humidity in the ventilator tubing. Assist sensitivity can be flow or pressure triggered, although flow triggering is generally more sensitive for smaller patients. The rise time determines the rate of rise of flow in volume control modes or the rate of rise of pressure in pressure control modes of ventilation. Very short rise times cause the pressure or flow to increase quickly and can be uncomfortable for the patient. Long rise times may result in a lower tidal volume being delivered in pressure control mode or higher pressure being required in volume control modes. 
You may pause the recording and study the table for generalizations of how the adjustment of ventilator variables will impact the partial pressure of CO2 and oxygen in the patient. In general, PIP and rate control the CO2 levels, whereas PEEP, FiO2, and the I to E ratio have a larger impact on the oxygen levels. This concludes Module 2. Thank you for your attention. We would like to acknowledge the American Academy of Pediatrics, the Organization of Neonatology Training Program Directors, Neo Reviews, and Abbott Nutrition for their support of this educational program. This concludes this module.